G'day everyone, my name is Cautious Pancake and today I'm going to show you how to build a base that exploits the changes to Trader Compounds in Alpha 21. Trader Jones is now open. Also let me put in a quick shout out and a big thank you to Dragoon whose comments provided the inspiration for this video. With the new Trader Compounds that were introduced in Alpha 21, I'm sure you've noticed that you no longer get teleported away if you run around the outside of the compound at night. So of course that prompted attempts to get inside the trader compound after hours to take advantage of the trader protection that prevents zombies from doing damage to the walls of the compound. To get inside the compound at night, we want to use some blocks to get high enough to jump over the wall, but when the build block icon is red, it's not possible to put down blocks, as it's within the trader's POI boundary. But just outside of that, you can. However, getting inside of the trader combat at night still results in an instant expulsion by teleportation, so unfortunately we can't hang out all night inside with our favourite trader. But, on a few of the trader compounds, this one is Jen's, there are sections where the wall comes out right to the edge of the trader POI block, and that provides an opportunity. Because despite the fact that you can't always attach things directly to the wall when you're looking at it, you can attach it to the ground, build up, and then remove the bottom two layers. The blocks on the third and fourth level then remain floating as they are considered attached to the trader compound wall. From there, blocks can be attached to the blocks already in place, and a floating base can be built up against the invulnerable wall. In some cases, you can also attach blocks directly to the third level of the fence, which is where you want to start your build, so that you have two levels of block attached to the fence. If you only use a single row up against the barbed wire, then you'll have issues with stability. It's also worth noting that for this build, it is better to build directly with cobblestone blocks, as if you start with frames, you will hit the limits of stability before you finish the build. And trying to upgrade frames to wood and then cobble can cause collapses. Having said all that though, here's a fairly safe approach to building a basic hatch hallway that is attached to the trader wall and therefore has an invulnerable wall holding it up. Start with a row of five plate blocks rotated to the top to give the largest clearance between the zombies on the ground and the block, which should minimise the damage they can do. On top of that, place a row of blocks, and then another on top of that again. From there, build out two rows into the air. This will be the platform on which the base will sit. Next, build the wall three blocks high on either side, fill in the roof, pop on some spikes on top, and some hatches inside, and we're done. Okay, let's have a look at how this performs in a horde night. First, let's knock down this old thing, just so that it doesn't interfere with the zombies. Then, to get into our base, we're just going to have to nerd pole up and then grab the blocks that we can reach. From there, since there's no way for the zombies to get to us, this day 7 horde is just going to be AFK, so here's a quick 20 second montage of the zombies slapping an invulnerable wall. That's Horde Night over. Jumping back into first person, you can wander your way out here, lob down a Molotov on those zombies that are left. Note that a bunch of the zombies have already died due to the barbed wire, so there's not a full complement left, making it quite an easy way to clean up at the end of Horde Night. Hopping on down, one more to go. Looks like just one inside the base. Let's see if he will come over to the gate for us. And while we can't get in yet, because it's not yet 6 a.m., we should be able to pop a few rounds, or just one, through the fence. And that's Horde Night complete. Checking for damage back on the base. If we have a look underneath here, we can't see that those plate blocks have taken any damage, and the blocks above it are fine as well. So not a single point of damage has been incurred on that Day 7 Horde. 
Now for day 14, we can level this up a bit and add in an extra pathway to allow the zombies to path to us, but it's still going to be an AFK base. Zombies will make their way up these block stairs, which will help to separate them out from each other, then run down this ramp around the corner to this zombie dropper, made of my usual pole half plate blocks. The zombies should fall down through the gap whenever they try and walk across. For those that do happen to make it over, we've got hatch protection to allow us to fight, and the wall in front of us is to break line of sight for cops and spiders. However, the main feature of this base is back outside, and that's the sledge turret. This little offshoot here is designed for us to pop down a sledge turret. I found they're often available as a quest reward, usually around the tier 3 quests, and even with no points put into a robotics inventor, the location is just within the default 10 block range for activation. You can see if we move back, the turret turns off, and forward again, and it turns back on again. The intent of this base then, is to punt all of the zombies over the fence using the sledge turret, and into the trader compound, where they won't be able to get back through, as the wall is invulnerable, and zombies don't get magically teleported out like players do. So let's kick on into Horde Knight, and see how this one works. Cleanup complete. If we have a look, there's a little bit of damage on the stairs up here, a little bit more over here caused by the zombies just getting a little frustrated during their jumps. A little bit more there and there. I think we lost a block up there actually during the horde night, probably by one of the zombies that was stuck in the barbed wire. And we did have a bit of a cop explosion towards the end there just during the cleanup phase, which has caused some of the damage to these pillars. Just because they're so close to the edge there, some of the cop explosion damage does go through the invulnerable wall and hits the blocks. Overall though, that base performed really, really nicely for day 14. Now just before we get into the final build that looks at how we can use this at a max game stage level, should you decide to have a play with any of these techniques, the traders that you can use this for are Jen, who has one small arc up on the left, and the back wall against which you can build. Bob, who also has one wall available for building and Rekt, it has the most usable compound with all four walls available for this exploit. Hugh and Joel, however, both have compounds that are fully within their POI boundaries and cannot be built right up against the wall. So for this last base, we've come out to the wasteland to maximize our game stage, set player level to 300, set day to 7,000, and increase the run speed for the zombies to the nightmare, as well as setting the difficulty to insane. This should give us our max game stage horde night, with max difficulty, and let's see how this goes. We've doubled up the staircase to come up from both left and right, and we've maxed out Robotics Inventor so that we can run two sledge turrets at once. We've set the pillars back away from the fence in case there's any cop explosions or demo explosions, which should mean that the base is fairly well invulnerable to damage other than any cop spit or vulture attacks during the horde night. With the run speed set at Nightmare for the Horde, I expect a few more zombies to get past the sledge turrets, which is why we've added in a second zombie dropper as well, to try and encourage them to return, but we'll see whether that's enough, or whether any of them end up at the door of the base and have to be fought off manually. <laughs>
and there's the Horde Knight over. Just give the last couple of zombies a chance to head back over the fence. And then we might just pop outside and see if we can do a bit of cleanup. Just to show, there's the game stage with the new game stage modifiers for the Wasteland biome. That's up to 1,296. And as we head out here, we should be able to just stand in the middle here and hopefully any zombies that creep up behind us will get hunted off the edge by the sledge turret. And we can just use the rocket launcher to do some cleanup with the frag grenades. Use the explosive grenades as well if we wanted to, it wouldn't do any damage to the trader, but the frag rockets will do more damage to the zombies there. Okay, there's only a few zombies left, so we might just leave them there. And in the meantime, we'll go and have a look and see what damage was done. A few incidental hits here and there. On the blocks, these are all concrete painted blocks. Well, they have 5,000 health. They've only just been tickled here and there, really. Nothing to write home about. Same through there. A few zombies stood on some weird blocks and occasionally did some damage here as well. And a bit of beating on the door, mostly because I was off filming and not paying attention to what the zombies were doing. So there you are. Now you can build a base that hovers in the air, attached to an invulnerable wall, or add in a ramp to punt zombies over into the trader compound, locking them in and preventing them from getting out of that invulnerable cage until you let them out. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If so, please click the like button to give this video a boost. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future, please subscribe and come back for the next one. As always, Thanks for watching and happy building.